Use cash back toward your down payment or get a check from Mazda. Hurry! Mazda's final 87 clearance ends soon. Hi, gang. I'm Steve Cannon. Join me for the latest news, weather, and traffic. Weekday afternoon rush hours on WCCO Radio. Be at the Dome Saturday, August 22nd, as we kick off our home schedule with a preseason game against the Indianapolis Colts. Get your first look at the Vikings as we gear up for what should be an exciting season. Come to the Dome and enjoy Vikings football. Call Dayton's at 375-2987 or the Vikings ticket office at 333-8828 and reserve your seats now for the Vikings preseason action against the Indianapolis Colts. Tickets are selling fast, so call now. You know, this is Walt Disney World. But so is this. And this. Walt Disney World. A vacation within a vacation. It's the world's greatest resort. Listen to hear to see the world, Walt Disney World. This just into our newsroom. The person killed tonight in the tornado near Fergus Falls was from Carver here in the metro area. And four of those hospitalized are part of the same family. Well, that update from Macbeth of the Lake Regions Hospital. About 15,000 fans are holding a candlelight vigil tonight at the grave of Elvis Presley. The night-long vigil marks the 10th anniversary of the death of the rock and roll legend. It wraps up a week of tributes to Presley, who died of heart disease in 1977. The vigil is taking place outside Presley's mansion, Graceland. Looking at some news in brief this Saturday night, in South Africa, the strike by thousands of black miners is getting more violent, and the two sides seem to be moving farther apart. Today, the mine owners said they'll not reopen wage talks. The strikers held a dance of defiance. It was 40 years ago today that the British flag went down for the last time in India, and tonight the nation is celebrating that anniversary of its independence. Much of the British influence can still be found in India, however. Here in America, there's a new national park to explore before the winter hits. It's in Nevada, and it's called the Great Basin National Park. Officials say it's an undiscovered treasure of 77,000 scenic acres. It was a solemn ending today to a week-long memorial to the Vietnam War. Fire. Ready. Aim. Fire. Rifle squads, color guards, and a lone bugler mark the close of the replica of Vietnam Veterans Memorial in South St. Paul. The half-sized silk screen memorial drew more than 25,000 visitors during its seven-day stay here in the Twin Cities. 7,000 people volunteered to paint homes today. Not their own homes, but the homes of the elderly and disabled. It was the fourth annual Metro Paint-a-thon, and it put fresh paint on 278 houses. Terry Sater reports. Jim Young volunteered his painting skills and his heart today. You come in the morning and it's in bad need of paint. And you leave at, you know, 2 or 3 o'clock, total transformation. And it, it's fun to see. It's fun to be a part of it. Young and thousands of novice painters touched up the homes of the disabled and elderly. Old age and weather have cracked and faded this home's skin. At age 70, Ruth Spetton says she knows what that feels like. I got the spirit, but I, the body don't want to do what it's supposed to, what I wanted to do. That's the problem with me. But Ruth's problems were partly healed today by a painting crew from the mayor's office organized by Eva Davis. Basically, it's just really just trying to find out what to do. I've never painted a house before, so that's a good experience. And the neighbors around here are really nice. Neighbors helping each other is what makes a community, what makes a city special. The paint jobs are worth about $1,000 each. And three times as many homes were painted this year than were painted during Paint-a-thon's first try in 1984. Oh, I was so happy about it. Because I was thinking I couldn't do it. And they were all, they're all so nice, all of them are. Paint-a-thon organizers say 98% of the volunteers come back the following year. Uh, I think it's a good cause to help someone that's less fortunate, that can't afford to paint their house. It's a good time to get to know everyone from outside work. 
thank you, thank you, thank you. I just love every one of them. They're really, I was really appreciated this. Terry Sater, WCCO Television News, St. Paul. If you would like to volunteer to paint next year or you need your home painted next summer, you can call 870-3660. That is 870-3660. Do we still have watches and warnings out here in Minnesota? At the moment, there are no warnings in effect, but there is a watch for much of central Minnesota, and it comes right up to the western portion of the Twin Cities. So, till 2 a.m., keep them crossed and keep the weather eye peeled. was night, and she had a beauty that captivated my soul. I dared hope for no more than a fleeting glance, a glimmer of recognition. Yet what she gave me was so much more. And that is what eating a Dove Bar is like. Nah, it can't be that good. I swear it. This October, join WCCO Television and Holiday Travel in California. See San Francisco, Los Angeles, and in San Diego, we'll relax at the Tropical Hanalei Hotel. We'll enjoy dinner and a show during our stay at Lawrence Welk Village. Eight-day tours depart either October 1st or 29th. For your free brochure, call the WCCO California hotline weekdays 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. 1-800-826-2266. Hi, it's me, America's oldest romantic baritone working with America's oldest car company. Burns and Olds. I get top billing. I'm older. Oldsmobile just turned 90. Nice kids. I'm here to tell you about Oldsmobile's 90th anniversary celebration. You're going to love the values. An opportunity like this comes once in a lifetime. In my case, maybe twice. Celebrate now with 1.9 APR GMAC financing or up to $1,000 cash back. He's insane. A pervert. Insatiable. And very British. Not a lot of people know that. Tonight on Channel 4. For 70 years now, volunteers in Robbinsdale have kept the fire department there going. Today, community residents honored those firefighters. The community hosted an open house offering fire truck rides, safety demonstrations, and free refreshments. This evening, they even held a street dance in front of the Hubbard Avenue station in Robbinsdale. And I imagine they'll be dancing there until the uh, rain starts falling. When might that be? Mm, 97 minutes or so. <laughs> yeah, it depends on where you are, of course. Uh, there is a second season for severe weather in Minnesota. It happens to be from about now to the first week of September. And it usually occurs with exactly the kind of situation we have. A large, tropical, steamy air mass covering much of the country. Dew points in the mid-70s. This is as sticky as it gets. A cold front on our doorstep bringing cooler Canadian in and behind it. And where the two air mass armies meet, kaboom, that's where it all happens. It was pretty obvious, even early this morning, this whole region was placed under a risk of severe weather. And it was just a matter of waiting and twiddling your thumbs until the watches were issued. They were and there is now a tornado watch for much of minnesota it just comes up to the extreme western portion of the twin cities so about sherburn and mcleod county is the eastern uh, side of this tornado watch so the metro area per se is not in it but we're close enough uh, that we can't let our guard down looking on the satellite image you can find the thunderstorms on the cold front they started in northwestern minnesota by late afternoon and then all of a sudden they just start to break out along this whole region northeast southwest line that is moving steadily and rather slowly eastwards. That means the rains that occur with it are going to be rather heavy. Quite a fireworks show going on over the last few hours, about two to 4,000 lightning strokes an hour. And one thing we noticed that, at least by the lightning, that most of the heaviest stuff is actually now in northern Minnesota and down in South Dakota. While it's hardly trivial through the central portion of the line, there seems to have been a little bit of weakening over the last two hours. Uh, there wasn't very much though, around 7.30. This is the Fargo radar picture. Here's Fergus Falls, and this is the area where the tornado touched down near Eagle Lake along Highway 78. As you've heard, one person reported uh, dead, seven injured, three of them critical, and there may be more reports on that. Here's our live radar. Now, we have to caution you that the, the radar is not working well tonight. In other words, it's showing the intensity of the echoes less than they are, so we're really not sure how strong they are within this line. Obviously, they have been quite intense. We have had numerous reports of power line outages in Todd, Meeker, and Western Stearns County, etc. 
At the moment, there are no warnings flying for Minnesota, any place in Minnesota, but that will probably change. Most of this entire region earlier tonight has had warnings for at one time or another. 89 was the hot high today. 71 was the not very cool low last night. No precipitation. Uh, we might get through the day, but about 12.01, it'll probably start raining. And we lose another four minutes of sunshine tomorrow as things start to cool down. And it's already cooling down out west. If you look at some of those temperatures, it was 38 at Cut Bank, Montana, 37 at Winnemucca, Nevada, 31 at North Lake Tahoe this morning. That's cool. But we're in the warm, and you can see there's a lot of it. Hundreds all over the place. It even got up to 99 in Madison today. And you notice it's also a lot cooler behind that front. 60s and even 50s crawling into Montana. So we will see it getting cooler and particularly drier. That's going to be the main impact of this front tomorrow. But behind it, there are going to be some widely scattered showers and clouds. So tomorrow's not going to be one of those crystal blue sky days, I don't think, that you normally get after a cold front. 70s and low 80s will be the temperature regime, but the dew points from the mid-70s will drop down into the low 60s and 50s, which is much, much more comfortable. Heavy rains tomorrow will be right on the edge of some shower activity during the day. The heavy stuff will be over in Wisconsin towards Chicago, where come to think of it, they don't need rain either after their, their flash flood and storm of the century. Um, just keep your eyes peeled. It's, something's going to come at you from the west in the next two to three hours. And right now, it's mostly cloudy, 82 degrees. The current temperature is 75 is the dew point. 79% of humidity. The wind southeast at 9. Barometer 29, 67, and steady. So tonight, those thunderstorms rumbling in over the next one to three hours could be locally severe in a few areas. Otherwise, partly cloudy, warm, and humid. The low about 73. Tomorrow, variably cloudy with a few scattered thunderstorms in the morning and again in the afternoon. Less muggy. High about 84 with winds shifting to the northwest. Tomorrow night, partial clearing and cooler. And on Monday, might be still a few rain sprinkles around, but basically variably cloudy and not really that bad a day. High about 78. And the week ahead, we don't see a return of any awful heat. In fact, temperatures should be pretty close to the normal for this time of year. Maybe another wave of thunderstorms come Thursday. So as we said, between now and about 2 a.m., some heavy weather can come through the Twin Cities area. We're close enough to the tornado watch area that we better uh, to keep the old weather ear peeled. Sounds like it could be a long night for you. I've had a few. Okay. 100 young people ignored the high dew points and the warm temperatures earlier today as they competed in this year's Special Olympics. The Minnesota competition held at Lake Hiawatha. The Minneapolis Park and Recreation Department helped coordinate that event. Coming up next, 100 lucky young people in St. Paul. They've been participating in a summer jobs program that was successful, but still has lots of room for growth. Stay with us. Now at best, a new dimension of sight and sound. Scotch EG all-purpose video cassettes in the convenient three-pack. On sale for $10.79 plus a $1.80 manufacturer's rebate. Also get three $1 instant savings checks good for future Scotch purchases at best. Scotch Video Head Cleaner, the sure way to clean VCR heads. Regularly $12.99, only $9.99 plus a $0.90 cent manufacturer's rebate at best catalog stores. Weekdays, they're single. Bachelor number two. Here I am. Innovative. I look a lot like Billy D. Williams, and I don't look a whole lot like Shirley Temple. And very, very creative. We put the soles of our feet together after I lick them. This is courtship in America. You're, you're beautiful. I don't know. I love you. That's a good one. I lie all the time. I enjoy lying. On the all-new dating game. I'm Elaine Joyce. Join us on Channel 4. More than 100 St. Paul teenagers have fond memories of the summer of 1987. That because of the city's new employment program. Well, that program found them jobs, but the program also fell short of its goal. Reporter Ava Thompson looks at what went wrong and how the city plans to change it. This summer, 16-year-old Roy Jacobs is doing clerical work for coordinated health care instead of hanging out with friends playing basketball. He works 40 hours a week and earns $4.50 an hour. I wanted to have my own money so that I wouldn't have to ask my parents for money all the time. And I think I needed this experience for you know my future once I graduated out of high school. This year, for the first time, St. Paul asked the private sector to help make up the loss of 200 federal jobs. Hiring Jacobs is the company's first try at employing teenagers for the summer. He caught on quick. He's real pleasant to work with. and. Um, Everybody likes him here really a lot, so it's, it's worked out really well for, for him as well as us. 
About 135 teenagers got jobs through the St. Paul program. Although that number fell short of the goal, the mayor predicts the city will do better next year if it starts recruiting earlier. About 50 jobs went unfilled because students' abilities did not match employers' expectations. I think we ought to make it a year-long effort and not go to the private sector just before summertime. Number two, I think we have to prepare the employer as well as the kid a lot better. Jacob's employer is already initiating the city's goals. His bosses hope to offer him a part-time job during the school year and hire another youth employee next summer. Many see this summer's recruitment effort as a sign of the times. If federal job programs continue to be cut, cities like St. Paul will have to depend more on the private sector to get youth employed. Ava Thompson, WCCO Television News, St. Paul. This fall, St. Paul hopes to offer job counseling to young people to prepare them for part-time employment. Well, the Twins scored almost as many points as the Vikings did this evening. That's right. We're feeding scores down to Mark down in New Orleans. In the Twins game, mm -hmm. he had to be saying, is that a football score or a Twins score? 14-4, <laughs> to four, Twins win, Vikings lose. We'll talk about it in a minute. When the Donahue Show began in 1967, we inherited a studio audience from the variety show that we replaced. And I noticed during the commercials they were asking some very good questions. It must have been the third or fourth show I just got up and walked out into the audience and uh, it happened almost by accident. And we realize now that without the studio audience, there would be no Donahue show. That was one whale of a first inning for the <laughs> Twins. And one whale of a first half for the Vikings. The Twins wound up in great shape. The Vikings did not. But, you know, you take the good with the bad, although preseason games don't count that much for the Vikings, right? We're not too worried about that. But what we do like is that California pulls out of town. The Twins regain their Metrodome magic. Including tonight's 14 to 4 shellacking of Seattle, the Twins have won 27 of their last 34 dome games. Minnesota and rookie Roy Smith started slowly tonight, though, allowing a run on the top of the first, but health came quickly as the Twins exploded for eight runs in the bottom of the inning. Tim Loudner singled, scored a pair, making it 3 to 1. Kenny finally has lifted his average to 200. He did that tonight. Greg Gagne has been red hot lately. He doubled off the curtain in right center here to score two more. Some sloppy Seattle defense, an error and a throw that shouldn't have been made, allowed Gagne to come across. The Seattle starter, Lee Gooderman, a 9-3 and three record, was then gone. The twin finished off the Mariners in the second with home runs by Tom Brunanski and Kent Herbeck. Herbeck's upper deck blast, his 30th of the year, put the Twins at 11-1. to one. And for all intents and purposes, the game was over. The Twins' bats cooled off after the second. Gary Gaetti did get his 25th homer as they scored three more. Smith came up with seven innings and his first win ever in the majors. The Twins will try to make it three in a row tomorrow at 1.15. Well, Paul Molitor must not like drama. The St. Paul native led off tonight's game in Baltimore with a single. And although he is thrown out at second, Molly extended his hitting streak to 30 games. Ken Landro has the league record of 31, second best in the league for Landro now in this decade. The Brewers, by the way, lost to Baltimore 2-1. to one. Other games, it was Oakland leading California 2-0 when we looked at the third inning score. Detroit beat Kansas City 8-4, Boston over Texas 7-6, the White Sox shut out Toronto, and New York beat Cleveland 11-2. Montreal's Tim Wallach is one of the most unheralded yet talented players, I think, and certainly one of the best third basemen in the National League tonight. Against Pittsburgh, Wallach missed a home run here by about an inch, but then he got one by hustling. While the Pirates corralled the ball, Wally circled the bases for an inside-the-park homer and his 101st RBI the season. The Expos sparked by their great third baseman, went on to beat the Pirates for the score of 6-3. to three. In the National League, the Cubs beat the Mets 7-3. to three. San Francisco shut out L.A. There's the Montreal score over Pittsburgh. Philadelphia beat St. Louis 5-2. to two, And Houston topped Atlanta by the score of 8 to nothing. Well, the final score in New Orleans tonight was the Saints 23, the Vikings 17. 
Wade Wilson started and uh, picked up where he left off in the final game of last season when he won Player of the Week honors by completing 24 passes and beating New Orleans in that game 33-17. A Viking fumble recovery in midfield, followed by a six-play drive with Wilson getting most of the yardage in the air. Wilson and Leo Lewis got a big first down here at the New Orleans 15, and two plays later, Wilson threw the first touchdown pass of the season. to Anthony Carter, Wilson played most of that first half. He left with about four minutes left to go. And he directed the Viking offense mostly in the air. His second of two touchdowns, a six-yarder there to Leo Lewis. Came just before he turned the offense over to rookie Rich Gannon, who was impressive. He's the fourth rounder from Delaware. Gannon, who ran the opposite Delaware, showed that he can run the ball, pulling it down here when the protection collapsed and making it the first down territory. He also passed well, by the way, completing six passes in this drive. One of his bullets here found rookie wide receiver Greg Richardson and got the Vikings deep into Saints territory at the New Orleans 16. Four plays later, a Viking field goal made it 17-3 at the half. The Vikings scored twice, sir. The Saints scored twice against the Viking reserves in the third, made it 17-17. Then Brent Pease here, the 11th rounder from Montana, took over from Gannon. He completes a beauty to Richardson, but then he was welcomed to the NFL here by the defense. And uh, they got down in the deep reserves here, and Pease really didn't have the protection Gannon had. The Saints took advantage of the Viking rookies, and Jerry Ward, uh, Word, scored in the fourth uh, quarter, giving New Orleans a 23-17 victory after a missed extra point. They'll play again next Saturday against Indianapolis in the Dome. We'll be there to broadcast that game on Channel 4. Well, the international in golf is without a doubt the strangest tournament I've ever seen. First, they set it up so the highest score is the best. And then second, they had a sudden death playoff today, even though the tournament doesn't end till tomorrow. Only 18 players qualify for the final round. Seven players were tied for the last six spots, including this man, Steve Pate. So they played it off. Pate sank a putt. Dennis Watson, Watson was then eliminated. The final round of that international starts at 3 tomorrow here on Channel 4. Well, you know, the Cubans are kings of Pan-American baseball, but today we found out they're not unbeatable. America's Ty Griffin hit his second home run of the game today, a two-run shot, bottom of the ninth, and the U.S. beat Cuba for the first time in 20 years. America's 6-4 win also snapped Cuba's 37-game winning streak in Pan-American competition. Well, the biggest winner of the day was not the Twins or the Saints, but a Canterbury Downs customer who picked up the pick six and took home $58,000. In the 10th race of the day, the Eau Claire Stakes, Key Voyage, took a long voyage to the top. Key Voyage, number one, went way outside and went from last to first. Key Voyage, who has now won two straight stakes races, will be a favorite for this fall's Canterbury Juvenile, the $200,000 race for two-year-olds coming up at that Shakopee racetrack. What a day in sports. All right, very good. Thank you, Tony. Well, looking ahead to tomorrow, after we get through some possible rain this evening. It's going to be a little bit cooler, partly cloudy, and a high of 84. Good night, everyone. Hi, gang. I'm Steve Cannon. Join me for the latest news, weather, and traffic. Weekday afternoon rush hours on WCCO Radio.